and hope you all. There you go. Cool. They have to turn it on. They got to turn it on already. All right, people out there. This is the Queen of the Lotus Show, Black History, from Los Angeles, California, New York City, Atlanta, all around the world. We have Nigeria, uh, Ukraine, um, UK, UK, and we have um, um, uh, South America. We have people from all around the world, Germany, Kansas City, all around the world. This is checking out the Queen of the Lotus Show. All right, we're going to start it. Here we go. So we celebrate Marvin Gaye on Black History. Yeah, I think his birthday was uh, April 4th. April 2nd. It was April 2nd? Yeah. He got killed on April 1st from his father. And his birthday was April 7th. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What we got going on here? Okay, greetings from uh, from our listeners from New York, uh, the Carolinas, both of them. Mm -hmm. We also have people in, in Texas and Shreveport, Louisiana. Arizona. Everywhere, all around the world. Fort Worth, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, and we have people scattered everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Monique? Monique is looking for checking our show out. She's on Facebook, checking us out. Oh, already, she's, huh? Yeah, she's going to be a guest one day on my show, and we're going to be talking. Uh, we're trying to figure out what we'll be talking about soon. Okay. So, we so you ready for me? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, let me tell you what's going on in Los Angeles, the news. Uh, they had a, a march uh, with the gangs coming together, right. marching as a tribute to Nipsey Russell. I think that was very beautiful for people to put aside things because really the gang activity had quieted down. That's what I said. That's we, what I we, hadn't, we hadn't had any problems. Right. And so they had quieted down and so Nipsey wanted to really, really bring him into unity mm -hmm. and things like that. So, and he was doing like a wonderful work in the hood. Mm -hmm. That's where he was in the hood, right. trying to do things. Well, they say that he bought uh, sneakers for all the children at one school, mm -hmm. and he was doing things with computers and stuff and trying to teach them where they would have knowledge to go work at companies like, you know, Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and computer stuff and stuff like that. So he was doing a lot of things and with his clothing uh, at his shop, if he bought a shirt, he had some kind of little Apple tag on it, which is over my fake way because I don't understand that too much about the technology. But he said you could pull up his new music oh, on, the, wow. on the if you bought something. Yeah, they say if you bought a shirt from here a year from now, if something new came out pertaining to him, right. you'd be able to just tag this on the shirts. 
it's really something really advanced. Wow. Uh, nobody, nobody's done that. What he's talking about, what he's what he's done oh, to, to, to his uh, church. Uh, yeah, and so he had Crenshaw written on it, clothes. That's good. Crenshaw. <laughs> it's a very popular street in L.A. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I told people. I told the girl earlier when I was on um, the um, the um, Love and Us show. I was talking about mm-hmm. how how Crenshaw is mm-hmm. and stuff. So you you mainly let people know more detail about it. And understand that you you live in LA. I live in Cal- I live in Montana, but I still see stuff going on. But you right there in the middle of it. Yeah. So you in Inglewood. And, and you know, like on Crenshaw, they have like what do you call it? The mural that's round a long yeah. way yeah. Uh, on Crenshaw. The cars come right down. And they have all Black history on this mural, and it's been there for years. We never had a problem until the past maybe about. Three or four months ago, somebody put a swastika on that, you know, oh, like the Hitler man. thing. Yeah, for the first time. Because the kids respected it. They never wrote or done anything to this mural. Because we also got murals uh, on the green line, you know, mm-hmm. uh, where, where you catch your the trains train, at. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. See, it's, 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 it's a shame. Right? Your, and your friend, do, your friend does a lot of that stuff. Yeah, Dre. Uh-huh. They do a lot. They do a lot, lot in LA. They do a lot in Las Vegas. He's a uh, Dre uh, Dizzle. Mm-hmm. This is a shop in Las Vegas, in Las, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. You can check him on his website. It's Dre, Z- Dre Zizzle, D R A Z. Oh, is it is it Drizzle? Drizzle. D R. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can check his website out. You can see all the pictures up there. And then you listen to my music. Mm-hmm. Is he's the producer, so he do everything. He's the man. And he's very talented out there in Las Vegas. So you need to check him out, people. Go to my website, check out my music, and then go to his website. You hear his stuff, what he be doing. And you know, uh, also, uh, Nipsey was going to do a documentary on uh, Dr. Sebi. Yes. I uh, I heard about Dr. Sebi a long time ago because I was in nutrition. And I used to sell a nutrition back in the 70s that was called Dr. Uh, I slipped my mind. Dr. Shakely, Shakely, something, something like that was called it, yeah. That I sold for years. Right. There were, <laughs> there were alfalfa and all kinds of stuff, you know, because I've always been into nutrition. Right. And so, anyway, uh, Dr. CB office was on Crenshaw. Okay. So he had offices in, in uh, LA and New York and different places, you know, besides Honduras. Mm-hmm. And I and uh, I believe you can you can also not buy his stuff off the internet. Yeah, it says his daughter. I heard that his daughter is living in Atlanta. She got a store in Atlanta. Yeah, he got a lot of children. Yeah. He got a lot of kids. Yeah. And so uh, he's very knowledgeable, and he said, if nature did not make it, don't eat it. I hear, I hear that. So, you know, like, if God made a potato, he made a potato. Mm-hmm. If you make potato chips, that's, that's processed. Right. Anything other than what God made right. is good for your body. When you start going to the next layer, the next layer, then you know taking corn and making Fritos, and right. <laughs> that's processed food. Processed food, and that's that's all that false stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, they start making your body bad. So you take a potato, and it's you okay. Cut it, you cut it out, yeah. and make your own fries. That's you, that's natural. See, no, you see, you putting grease in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, so, you know grease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you have like a baked potato, a mm-hmm. uh, 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 mashed potato or something, right. that's the first stage. But when you take one thing and make something different out of it, that's what they call process. Okay, I got that's you. That's man-made. Right. So if you stick to what God made, mm-hmm. it make you more healthy. Yeah. And so he was saying like, Dr. C.D., I've been watching him. I watched him a long time ago, but I started watching him again this week after he made it talking about all about Nipsey Russell wanted to bring out the truth about him because he cured AIDS mm-hmm. and diabetes and syphilis and all that stuff. And uh, they didn't like the idea uh, of his name as Dr. Seeley, but he said he didn't call himself a doctor. Other people call him a doctor right. because of what he done with the people. And so New York State Supreme Court sued him for making claims about healing AIDS. And so the judge told him to bring one patient that he healed. And he brought 70, 70. Ain't that and New York State Supreme Court dismissed the case against him. 
It was a lady judge. Yes, but he say, the cause of all your sicknesses is mucus in your body. Mm -hmm. So you want to get mucus and inflammation out your body. And my son brought me some, because he used to go to Dr. C.V. listen to him teach. And uh, I take aroma berries. That's a mixture of super berries. You'll find that on the internet. And that takes the inflammation out your body. Wow, they say right. all sickness comes from inflammation and mucus. Hmm. Okay, that's what What's the book? What's, what's it called again? I guess somebody want to get it. What's, what is it called? Aroma berries. Oh, Roman berries. Oh, oh A. A Roman berries. Rona. Oh, Rona. Berries. This deals with inflammation in your body. And inflammation and mucus cause problems. They had a guy that used to work in the mall. They call it iris dology. And they would look into your eyes and they tell if you have sickness in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. He charge twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. And he look in your eyes. And tell you have sickness. You have sickness. I need to go check him out. He told he told <laughs> what well, he's right there on uh he's right there on El Segundo and in Inglewood Avenue. Okay. But he told one of my children. He said you have mucus in your stomach. Yeah. He looked in the eyes and told her. And took that, and she took that stuff and it's gone. And she, she told me, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I said, well, why are you rebuking the man? <laughs> you paid him $20. <laughs> you paid him $20. <laughs> you see, but the thing was wrong with you. Right. And you got mad at him when he told you. <laughs> and she had to have surgery later on. Wow, ain't that something? <laughs> ain't that something? I tell you, I got to look at him make sure I'm all right then. Yeah, he can look in your eyes. Because, um, you know, your eyes is the windows of your soul. Mm -hmm. Wow. So uh, so you go there. So people got to hear that. You hear what you're saying? That take care of your health out there. Oh, people. yeah, it's very important. But because uh, uh, Dr. Uh, CB was saying, CB is S-E-B-I. Go on the internet and find him. He got so many interviews that he had with people. And uh, Left Eye. He went down to Honduras to mm -hmm. his camp. Right. That's where she died in the yeah. hot car accident. But he had treated Michael Jackson. He treated Michael Jackson, he said, in 2000 to 2004, mm -hmm. you know, to get his body healthy. And uh, uh, they say Eddie Murphy and a bunch of stars have been to him, wow. you know, for nutrition. You know, people trying to get healthy. Right? But then when he something happened about, it was about two years ago, I think it was, when he died and they thought something was funny about that because he had like 40,000 cash with him because he traveled with money, you know, like a lot of people don't trust bank. Right. You know, Little Richard didn't trust bank because I met Little Richard a long time ago. I don't, I don't trust bank either. <laughs> <laughs> and Little Richard, I was taking a picture with him and he had this bag in his hand, had dollar sign, you know, the big old bag that had a dollar sign on it. Right. And I say, what is that bag? What is this big bag you got? Because he put it behind him and took the picture. He said, my money bag. I keep my money in this bag. <laughs> I said, little Richard, you carry a big old bag around and say, dollar sign on the bag? He said, yep. But somebody stole it from him. A couple of months later, you heard on the news, somebody stole it. What? Yeah. He was carrying his cash around. <laughs> he was funny yeah. like that. But a lot of people don't trust banks. Yeah. You know, because... Uh, during the depression, people lost a lot of money in the banks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of older people don't, they don't trust banks. Right. So, so but anyway, uh, see if somebody wrote in. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Monique wrote in. You can tell a whole lot looking in someone's eyes. Happy, sad, sickness, and pain. That's right. So say yeah. Eyes is the windows of your soul. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, what we're gonna talk about, Nate, is uh, this is guy name is George. Stinny. Now look at him. This is a young boy. Mm -hmm. He's 14 years old. Okay, let's see. I think I read that somewhere. They electrocuted this kid. They electrocuted him? A 14 year old black boy. Where did they do that? In 1944. Oh, okay. Because it was two, uh, two Caucasian girls was killed. And they blame him. They blame it on him. They arrested him and beat him up. They wouldn't let him talk or do anything to him. And so just recently, uh, they found out he didn't do it. Yeah, and they, uh, they, they're trying to like, uh, what 
What's this word when you try to say this person didn't do it? Uh, they vacated. Yeah. His conviction was va was vacated in, in 2014. He's dead, now. he's dead. He's been dead since 1944. Two girls by. This little boy was so small. Let your, your son is 16. This boy is 14. Yeah. To let you a child. This boy was so small. He was five feet two. Yeah, he's small. When they took him to the electric chair, he had a Bible in his hand. They, when they put the electric chair on him, you know, because it's a heck on your head too. Right. He was so small, they had to have him sit on his Bible so they can electrocute him. And the first two times, the whole thing didn't go through, so they had to do it three times, they had to shock him three times. This little child, this was a child. Yes, child, yeah, definitely. 14 years old. And they didn't allow him to talk to nobody the whole time. And his trial lasted like and, one. And the girl lied. They yeah, lied. yeah. And his trial lasted uh, one day, and the jury decided in 10 minutes that he was guilty. Okay. In 10 minutes. His name is George Stinley. Stinley. S T I N N E Y. So you can put his name up on the internet. Like I said, anything we talk about. You can verify. Uh, so I always say have your tablets nearby when you're talking. Or right. I'll take your notes where you can read more about it. But this is so sad when I've seen the picture of this little child walking to the electric chair. And uh, they wouldn't let him see his family. And his family was scared. They left town. They fired him from the, the daddy from the job. And it's just... He didn't have nobody to talk to until they electrocuted him. So that I think that was 81 days. They only gave him 81 days in jail before they, before they killed him. And they found out he wasn't, that the girl lied. They don't, you know what? They don't, they don't put you in electric chairs. But they did to him because he was black. Yeah. That's, that's a picture of him. George Stinney. happened in 2004, George Pickerson, a local historian, mm -hmm. he started researching the case after reading a newspaper article about it. Okay. Wayne is watching. What's up? What's up, Wayne? What's going on? So, we also have a place called Africa Town. And this is in Alabama. Mm -hmm. Also known as African Town, USA, and Plateau, it's a historic community located three miles north of downtown Mobile, Alabama. It was formed by a group of 32 West Africans who in 1860 was included in the last known illegal shipment of slaves to the United States. The Atlantic slave trade had been banned since 1808, but 110 enslaved people held by the Kingdom of Dahomey was smuggled into Mobile on the Cartilla. That's a that's the last slave ship that came here, mm -hmm. which was which was burnt to try to conceal his illegal cargo, which was a slave. Now, the Kingdom of the Homey, they want to make another African movie like the Black Panther, and they want to make it about the Kingdom of the Homey because those were women warriors, like the ladies you seen in the Black Panther movies, right. the bald headed lady and stuff. Yeah. She looked tough. She looked really good. They want to make a movie about that, but if you're going to make things about truth, you also have to include that they captured a lot of people mm -hmm. and sold them to those other people right. as slaves. They captured other people all the time. Okay. That's the bad part about the Dahomey. But, the, but, the, the, but they were known for their women warriors. The army was women's. The army was women's? Yeah. So they gotta tell the truth. That's what yeah, gotta do. that's what you gotta do. You can't hide it because if you do, they're gonna bring it out because it's their evidence. But anyway, they built a town. These people. They I heard about. They didn't tell us about too many uh 
rebellion among slaves. Mm -hmm. But I had read about it was a rebellion among these people who they had captured uh, from their home in, in that neighborhood because these were warrior people and they got together. And uh, so you heard about Nat Turner, but it was right. it, it was more rebellion than that. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I I had read about it, about a hundred of them got together and started burning everything down and stuff like that. Maybe fighting and killing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because these you know because in their hometown. Because you still haven't watched Shaka Zulu yet, have you? Shaka Zulu, no. It's on, it's on uh, Netflix. You gotta watch it, Nate. I gotta watch it. It's the best. It's one of the best movies I've ever watch, seen. I watch Nate tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, you gotta watch. You gotta watch Shaka Zulu. So there were warriors over there, you know, because it's a different tribe, mm -hmm. and they fight each other. But they lived in this place uh, after after slavery time was over with. They they uh they just. They, they made a town for themselves. And it's called African Town. It's, see, it's still there. Welcome to Africa Town. Yeah, it's in Alabama. Look, look too. Yeah. So they still look up Af uh, Africa. Af Af African Town. Africa. 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 Town. Town, okay. Mm -hmm. This was a, uh, a welcome sign in 2017. Wow. It was, form it was formed by slaves. That's in Alabama. Alabama, Mobile. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see that. You went to Alabama? My brother, um, Fulham. Oh, just recently, huh? Yeah, that's why. Was it Mobile? Yeah, he went to Birmingham and he went to Alabama. He didn't say nothing. Yeah, you got to ask your brother about it. Don't your brother, does he still have a show? Yeah, he worked on it, gave it us. Oh, okay. So I'm going to talk more about that. I just wanted to give you, like, uh, a preview of this because I like to get more about it. So we want to talk about different issues and different things, but I just want to tell you more about that. And then one day I can read more okay. about it. You know, because like last week we talked about the little twelve-year-old rich girl. Yes. Yeah. You still got the paper? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was the richest. They call her the richest little colored girl in the world because uh, she was a. Uh, Right. She was part of, of uh, one of them Indian right. tribes, yeah, and they, and they got land, and she had, she had oil wells and stuff at 12 years old, because she, she was entitled to a piece of land by being part of what they call the freed people, freedmen people, who were captured by, uh, well, some of the slaves ran to the Indians, mm -hmm. and they was either Treated nice, or they was treated as slaves. Right. Her name was uh, Sarah Reckner. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, look up Sarah Reckner. R e e c t o r. The richest little colored girl. Yep. At that time, they called you colored. Oh, richer, richer. Yeah, so, so I'd have been through Negro and colored, mm -hmm. and black and African American. So I'm just I'd have been through four names. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> How many names have you been through? When you was a kid, what was you? What was you? Was you colored or Negro? You was, no, color was after Negro. Right. So you was colored. Was you colored then, no, or was no. you black? black. You was always black. Black. Right. Always black. Okay, you started with black. Black. So not black and African American. Right. So I went through both names. <laughs> 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 okay. So you want to play the music? Oh, we got time to do one more. Okay. Now, Nate, you heard about the uh, you heard about the Three Musketeers? Yeah, I heard about them on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know a black man is the one who wrote the story about the Three yeah. Musketeers? I know that. Yeah. And the Count of Miss uh, Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo. Yeah, Monte Cristo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was black men done that. Wow. They have never gave any credit and told no, who it was. Right about that. It's sort of like one of the things. Uh, uh, it's a word you say. Omission. Mm -hmm. Like a person tell like a half truth. And they omit some things. Yeah, it's like now yeah. about the Avengers. They don't tell everybody who Avengers everything. Yeah, so so this is like, <laughs> and then made all these movies about the three musketeers, but they never told you it was a black guy. This is the author. Yeah, Louis Gates up there too. But uh, he's the one that researched it and found out about it. Yeah, Louis Gates be on PM, PM, uh, PMS? PBS. PBS. Mm -hmm. 
show the people that you have one about Joe Madison soon. Yeah, you can see the hip, the big cat. That's the Okay. He was the author of the Three Musketeers. His name was Alexandre Dumas, a black man born to a French nobleman and a slave. He was sent into the highest ranks of the French military during that country's revolution, revolution, only to end up in a Italian dungeon and a poor man's grave. That's what happened to his dad. Hmm. He worked with Napoleon. Wow. The yeah. Napoleon general. Wow. They tried to tried to take Haiti, but Haiti whooped them, <laughs> sent them back out of there, and they've been punishing Haiti ever since. Yeah. Is it Dumas' most popular works was the Count of Monte Cristo? and the Three Musketeers have engrossed readers and actors for years. Yet many literary historians simply choose to erase his racial origins, leaving most readers until recently to assume the default and the author of these works had to be white in order to write so vividly about white people, even though his race was anything but a secret during his lifetime. And the thing about it was, I didn't notice until I researched my own self. I didn't know either. Never had no idea. At all. Did you ever fly in here? No, I'm just trying to get this. So a little three months to see the movie that never was mentioned in the movie. Mm -mm. At all, never. Because uh, they, they have made that movie uh, several times. Yeah, a lot they of times. It, they did it with Errol Flynn. Yeah, a lot of times, mm -hmm. three months to see this. Never said it was a, a, a black man. black man, never. Ain't that something? So now you learn something on uh, history people out there. So Henry Louis Gates is the one that searched yeah. it up and found it out. Make sure you check out Lu Hen Henry Louis Gates on PBS every Tuesday. He got a good show on there. Joe Madison will be on there. I think coming up this yeah this this month. Okay, what you heard from uh okay. from Madison this this past week that interests you? Um, well he was talking about he took a lot about um. What's going on with the health care? Mm -hmm. And um, they need to all call in to make sure they stopped it. It looked like they did stop it because they don't want to mess with it until 2020 because they don't have nothing for it. Oh, so, oh they're going to stop messing with Obamacare? Yeah, until 2020. Oh, the, oh to the election now? Huh? Yeah. Oh, because they know that they'll lose a lot of votes because yeah, he know that. Probably, yeah. probably the other congressmen that, man, don't mess with this. Yeah, yeah, he he know, the yeah, he knows his people will be on his behind. 30% of the people. But them dumb people would still vote for him yeah, even though they, yeah, they, they can't get it. It's ridiculous. It's mm -hmm. terrible. You know, and then um, he talked about Nipsey. He said some people maybe need to step up and take the torch and follow through because you don't want to, uh, to take the, what they call it, uh, vindication. Vindication. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, so we need to stop that. He talked about that. So there's a lot of stuff he talked about. So if y'all want to know more about um, anything about more about your history and anything, go to Joe Madison on 126 Series XM in the morning. You know. How much does it cost a, a month to, to get him? It costs like uh, $10. That's all. Less than that sometimes. But you hear, you hear so much history on there yeah, every day. Yeah, you get, it, you get it for free for, for, you get it free for 30 days, sometimes you get 60 days free. Mm -hmm. so sometimes you get it 6 months free. Yeah. It you know? starts in the morning yeah. like in, in Los Angeles, uh, we get them at three o'clock in the morning. Right, and then they get. So I guess on the East Coast, maybe six o'clock. Mm -hmm. But you hear him, and uh, is this show like three or four hours long? Four hours. Four hours, and so you call in. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he talks about everything. He's very current. I mean, and I also jo enjoy listening to Karen Hunter. Karen Hunter. She comes yeah. like twelve o'clock. Um, but if you're a driver or a truck driver, yeah, you know, that would keep you interested and keep That's you awoke. Right. Keep you awoke. Uh -huh. Keep you going. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got Karen Hunter's show. You got Joe Madison in the morning. You got Laura Cunningham. Mm -hmm. You got Karen Hunter's show. You got Joe Madison in the morning. You got Laura Coates after Joe Madison. She's a lawyer. She breaks down the lawyer cases. What we need to know about. What we need to go vote. What we need to go to jury duty. After her show, you got Clay King. After Clay King's show, you got Karen Hunter. 
As the cow and hunter go, go, so you got the main man, Garfi Complex. You want to laugh and learn about more about black stuff and hear about talk about who hate us? Listen to his show. He is funny. He is a comedian called Garfi Complex. Check him out. And that's and on Cyrus. That's on Cyrus XM. Mm -hmm. And he got us on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So we all jumping on on it. So he goes listen to us on Saturdays. And Fridays, and and do your shows on, your show on my shows on my shows on two. I mean, it's my show is on Thursday called the Reggae, the Hot Reggae Show on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Comes on at four thirty, uh, seven thirty Eastern, in California time, four thirty. And then on on Friday you have you have um, Doctor Peasy show. Don't miss that out. They come on at three thirty Eastern. I mean, uh, six six thirty Eastern. My four six thirty Eastern. Then I come on after him doing classic black music. My show will, start, will soon start at 5 and be on to 6. And then after that, on Saturday, you have the other shows. That's um, the Love and Lust show. Come on at... You say 5 and 6. What day of the week is that? That's on Friday. Okay. And then you have um, the Love and Lust show on Saturday. She comes on at... Um, that's the latest name. Right. Love and Lust. Her name is, that's her show. Her name is Rev Spice. Her show comes on at 6 o'clock Eastern. And then you have the... For one thing, I would like for people to, to subscribe right. to our show. To our show. Yeah, subscribe to our show. It is free. Our show is free. All anybody about music, you can send your music free at Free Airplay. At Free Airplay. And also when you subscribe, they let you know when we have a new show right. available. Yeah, Free Airplay at gmail.com. And then you check out the YouTube video of Queen Mother Lois. If you go to Queen Mother Lois um, show. show on YouTube and you can go to the website. You go to the website, all her shows on there too, on dnaradio.net. And also Facebook. On Facebook too. That's right. Andy Lee Facebook. You see it on there. So we've been so we've been doing this show since uh, 2017. November's when right. we started. Right, your show. Mm -hmm. Yes. So everybody just um, lay back and if you want to call in, ask some questions. It's 909-352-0037. 909-352-0037. You can call in and we will talk. And if you got any questions about black history, just call it up. All right, again, 909-352-0037. We're going to play some music. And this is the DNA Radio Queen Mother Show, Black History. Here it goes. Nick Ski, 225 song, What's Going On? Let's keep in the house. 2004. Let me know what's going on. In the middle of the year, my boys can live on what's our choice. I'm with the rhythm dedicated to all my boys. If you like the sound, I'm about to be full. A black white for the weekend. Yeah. 
The problem I have will slowly be destroyed. I struggle to buy a piece of beer. The heart is against my family still. Me away, me away from the negativity to the positivity and the cat or food. The dang it with me. God bless me. The devil can't trust me. Step in my path and you might get that cheese. Yeah, New York. You know, uh, it was a, a white guy that was um, researching his family tree, mm -hmm. and he found out his ancestor was a black man. <laughs> <laughs> he was white. He didn't know. And he was going crazy. Yeah, he just, uh, he was just, he said it was a surprise, it was in his family tree. And uh, it was like during the time, in the, in the beginning, in the very beginning, they had uh, white people were slaves. Mm -hmm. But then uh, it was really hard to trace a white person that was a slave and he ran away because they could mingle with the society, you know, like everybody's white. Right. And they didn't stand out, so you waited. They couldn't tell. And they couldn't find a person when they ran away. Mm. But uh, a black person was different, so they could spot, you know, if a black right. person walked around, they know they are slaves. But they say, like, back in the very beginning, since both of them were slaves, they used to marry each other hmm. and have children together back in the 1600s right. and stuff like that. And so this white guy said he was just really surprised to find that out. But then they, uh, but also it's been said that uh, Alexander Hamilton, who was the president, he was the son of a mixed race woman from the British West Indies. Uh, and you know, Senator Strong Thurmond, who was a strong racist, he was in Congress. He had a black daughter, mm -hmm. even though he hated black people. Yeah, black daughter. He had a black daughter. He had mixed around with a black woman. And they say, one is Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. The president's wife. The president's wife? Yeah. yeah. Whose, whose bloodlines, according to the historian Mario de Valdez, why Kong Kong go back to the Van Salis, a Muslim family of Afro-Dutch origin, prominent in Manhattan in the early 1600s. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that was just like Queen Elizabeth when they found out her, her great, great, great grandmother was a black woman. Wow. You know, but <laughs> Jacqueline Kennedy had some black in her family. And they don't, they don't recognize it. Well, she probably didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but somebody else found out, just like they found out about Alexander Hamilton and also Eisenhower, because Eisenhower mother is what they call a mulatto, you know, people from Louisiana, like Creole and mulatto, right. and mixed race. Mm. Ike, mother, was a black woman. I had a picture of her last week. Mm. President I, Dwight Eisenhower. So they said they have they've had several people who was president of the United States was black. And nobody didn't really believe that because I read that like back in the sixties. Mm -hmm. But you finding out and you know it was true. Yeah. So they would have brought this up. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get your pens and paper and write it down. Look it up. And what we have, she gets she gets on the internet. See it's a lot of things was done and, and uh, you don't know. And then when they do when they do find out the truth, they keep it a secret, you know, because they don't want you to know. But uh, you know, it's going with the uh, the guy who was uh, uh had uh, Sally Hemings, the president, that black woman had six children by her. And he was the president of the United States, <laughs> and he kept her with him while he even while he was president. She, she went to France with him. She was like 14 years old. Mm -hmm. He kept her to, uh, 
the whole time. You know, she died. He died first uh, at his place, and then she was set free. And he said that some of the children free, that he had promised her. What happened was uh, his daughter set, set him in his prison. Because mm -hmm. he had said he was going to set her free and all the children, you know, stuff like that. And some of the kids passed. So some of the children passed and the other ones, you know, they acknowledged they were black. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Nate, so uh, next I'm going to talk about the great Jack Johnson. He was the first black heavyweight champion. And he's from Galveston, Texas. Mm -hmm. And boy, let me tell you, when they had fights, they had race riots. Wow. When he won, the white people got mad. <laughs> and like they, they, they was looking for the, the great white hope. Mm -hmm. uh, like in that movie that James Earl Jones made. They wanted uh, a white hope to beat him because he was a very bold black man. He got with a white woman back in, back in 19, between 1906 and 1909. Wow. Back in them days, 1900. Yeah. I think he married two white different women. Two, two white women. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very bold what he did. He didn't, he didn't shy away from it. He talked and bragged about it. And finally, uh, they put him in jail for a while. Oh, Trump pardoned him recently because Slice and Stallone. Yeah, Slice and Stallone, yeah. Uh -huh. He asked for that. But, uh. He was really dead, though. Yeah, oh, he been dead. Yeah, okay. yeah because that was, uh, that was the time of my, when my, my grandmother that he fought. And, and the race riots erupted, and they just saw how many people were killed. They, they, they even cut some people's throats. The white people did. They were so mad after the fight that he won. They say the day after, after he won his championship, on Independence Day, that's July the 4th, in 1910, race riots ignited across America. Jack Johnson, a black boxer, had defeated the white Jim Jeffries in a heavyweight fight in the middle of the Reno Desert. Cities around the nation, including Houston, New York, St. Louis, Omaha, New Orleans, Little Rock, and Los Angeles, erupted with anger and a vindication of a racially divided country. The day after, newspapers set on a difficult task of tallying the aftermath. One man was shot in Arkansas. Two Negroes was killed in Lake Province, Louisiana. One Negro was killed in Mounds, Illinois and the Negro fatally wound in Round Eye, Virginia. It was just like all over the country. Mm -hmm. They was killing black people because- Because uh, of the fight. Yeah, because of the fight and the black people couldn't act happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they was happy because the black man won. Right, it's amazing. But they couldn't, they couldn't rejoice and show that. It's great, that's 1910 and it's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. 2019. They say in Manhattan, San Juan Hill neighborhood. You ever heard of that? Say no. y'all. They say in Manhattan. Uh, a mob set fire to a black tenement while blocking the doorway to prevent the occupants to escape. Hmm. They wouldn't let people come out of the house. They said that. They were no wise. That's crazy. I'm tell you. How much hate they have in them. But they want to have sex with all women. They ain't got something. No, they, they weren't mad, but they were mad, they was mad that he wanted to fight. Yeah. That's what they were really angry about. And they say in Washington, two white men were fatally stabbed by, oh, some black people, because some people died. <laughs> they arrested 236 people in that city alone. <laughs> yeah, for that <laughs> fight. And in Omaha, a black man was smothered to death in a barber's chair. Another black guy, was driving an expensive car, and they took him off and hanged him. Mm. A report from Houston read Charles Williams, a Negro fight enthusiast, had his throat slashed from ear to ear on a streetcar by a white man. Heaven announced, heaven announced too, 
loud in the appreciation of Jack Johnson fight. Mm. You know, you couldn't smile and talk about the fight. Certainly. You watch, you watch that movie, The Great White Hope, didn't you? Yeah, 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 Good they say he had a, he had a, a big club in Chicago. Anything else you want to say? No, I'm not listening. This is a good this, this stuff right here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's calling in. There are people out there that's listening. They don't know about history, so they got to listen and learn. Yeah. That's good, though. They say Jack Johnson loved to drive fast. So he would get tickets and he would just hand people a you know, thousand dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> Police come to arrest him for driving. They say he loved to drive fast. They say they don't know how many people died in the wake of the Johnson Jeffries fight. And they was making a movie of the fight. And to quell the disturbance, cities barred the fight video from being shown in theaters. And Congress tried to pass a bill to stop the screening of all boxing films. Wow. Because so many people was getting killed. And, that, and that's a, that's the headline. Yeah. 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 Going on about that fight, and so uh, when I went back down there, uh, they had a dedication, and uh, that's when I met Muhammad Ali in person. Oh, Ali was a man. Yeah, he was a. Uh, they came down there for the dedication of the statue. It was a guy who used to pay for the Rams. He had like a Jerry curl. Now he's bald headed. Uh, uh -oh. He was a, he was like a runner. I mean, he was a. Uh, what was his name? I think it was his name. Back in the day, or yeah, back in the day, he was sort of like obnoxious, you know, like he was very. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know he was a, a football player because Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard and all those people came down there. I think it was his name. I think. And, and mm -hmm. so I asked him. Dickerson. Eric, is it Eric Dickerson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway. I was taking pictures with all the, the boxers. So I asked him, I said, now what do you do? He said, I run. I said, run? I said, well, that's not important to me. I said, I tell you what, you take my picture with all the stars when they come in. You take my, so he sit on my chair, and I said, now you take my picture when all the stars come in. And everybody came in with shaking hands with him. And, and then, uh, <laughs> And the thing about it was so, he acted so humble around me to, to this person now that he was not an humble person. But he acted humble around me and he was saying, Miss, you want me to take your picture now? But, and every, but everybody was shaking hands with him. So I say, why are these people all, all want to shake hands with you? Why, why? I say, you, you're just a runner. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> So one of this guy, I can't think of his name, he was a big guy, he played on Houston team. I can't I can't remember his name, but anyway, he said, Well, you don't know who he is? I said, he told me he's just a runner, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the part to me. They say, this man is a great football player. I said, he is. He said, yeah. I said, well, he didn't tell me that he told me he was just run. He said he played with the ball, man. <laughs> I gotta I gotta bring this picture and show it to you, but it was so funny because he's not known as being the humble person. <laughs> <laughs> he was on you because he said, you can't treat me like I'm a star. Yeah, I treat him, I treat him like he was nothing. Like he, 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 like he wasn't important to me. Eric Dickerson. Uh, yeah, that's his name, Eric Dickerson, yeah. I'm, I'm going to find out his... Um, Did he still take the pictures on, with and, him? Yeah, I got lots of pictures with him. Oh, okay. Sit, <laughs> sitting on my chair. <laughs> But uh, I'm going I'm to contact him on the internet one day and say, remember that lady in Texas didn't think you was important? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He'll remember you for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think he ever forget that. No. Okay, question. Did any blacks kill any whites 
as a eye for an eye. That was from um, I got a question for somebody asking us. For as eye for eye for what? For the fight? For the fight. I think I did see one. Okay, this is all uh, about the black women. Minor disturbance between whites and blacks broke out here following the announcement of the Johnson victory. The most serious attack was made by two Negroes with beer bottles on a white woman. Yeah, he throws some beer bottles. But uh, most of it was uh, white people killing blacks. This is uh, two Negroes with beer bottles. Negroes, black and white class. They clash in cities of north, south, east, and west. Yeah. Race riots broke out like pretty heat all over the country late today between whites and and more and so on because Jeffries had lost the fight at Reno and Negroes jubilant that Johnson had won. A, a white man was shot in Arkansas and a Negro was fatally wounded so was at Virginia. So white man was shot. shot. Yeah, but yeah. the tension that existed everywhere manifested itself chiefly in street scuffle. Here and there, a knife flash and a few scattered shots were fired. But there were more broken heads and black eyes than serious wounds. As the night progressed, the rotten grew more serious. In New York, just running whites fired a Negro tenant to dead a fire. At Moons, Illinois, a Negro constable was killed and another was mortally wounded. Street riding broke out in Kansas City, through Elbow and North Norfolk. And two Negroes were shot in New Orleans. It was just all over the country. So some, some whites did get killed, some did, mostly blacks though. Yeah. So some whites did get killed, but mostly black people. Well, they, they only said, uh, they said white was killed, and they said that. Killed, only the one person was killed, shot. What's the question? Oh, he said, he was shot by somebody, one white man. I know they said uh, two Negroes had uh, some beer bottles they threw that in later. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fighting. I mean, it was this was in the 1900s, so there was a lot of anger there. They say between 11 and 26 people were killed. Likely hundreds was assaulted or beaten. So this, uh, like right now, uh, sometimes when they have uh, great fights, they they put them uh, the, the movies. They used to make a movie of it. Mm -hmm. I know my children went to see the Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier fight at the movie theater. Uh, so they had the band making movies of, of the fights when Jack Johnson fight as a white person. Okay, they said, Wilson William Pickett's president of the all black Toledo College was heartened by the symbolic victory acknowledging it came at a great cost. It was a good deal better for Johnson to win and a few Negroes to be killed in body for it, he said, than for Johnson to have lost and Negroes to have been killed in spirit by the preachments of inferiority and inferiority from the combined white press. As Johnson biography, George C. Ward pointed out, no event yields such widespread racial violence until the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. 58 years later. Hmm. That fight, yeah. 1906, that's really a long time ago. So they hadn't been free that long. Right. You know. So this, this is man, he was a bold person. Came from the South and went all over the world. He stayed over in England and France and all like that. So he followed a guy all the way to Australia who didn't want to fight him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
And Judge Johnson, he didn't really care too much about fighting other black people because he said they didn't bring enough money. Right. He said they wanted to come see him fight a white man mm -hmm. and people would come, you know. He said they didn't care about two black people fighting each other. Right. Mm -hmm. He was very rich. And he did it his way. Right. <laughs> but he paid for it, you know, they put him in jail. And and he skipped out the country because he was at he went to see his mother in uh and some people who was in the like all black uh, uh, baseball team came to the house, and he sneaked out with them and escaped and went over to uh, England because he put on one of their hats and walked out of the house like he was a baseball player. Mm -hmm. And somebody else was, was dressing in like a shirt he had on, and he sitting in the window the whole time, so they didn't know he had escaped because they was coming to get him. Right. Okay, you got some more music. Okay, we'll play some more music, but we got about 15 more minutes for the That's show. That's what we talked about? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about something. Well, we started, we started late. That's right. Yeah, so we got. We started, more. yeah, we started about. Yeah, so we got, we got another, we got another uh, hour. No, we don't have another hour. Another, uh, let me see. Our show is supposed to be an hour. Yeah. We, we started, we started at 745. No. No, 645. Yeah, 645. 645. Mm -hmm. so, so it's 745 so uh, now. Right. So we can do 15 more minutes. Yeah. Uh, what I want to talk about was uh, this woman, uh, she had talked about her son not having enough money to buy insulin, and he died because, you know, like, if children is sick, they can be on their parents' insurance until they are 26. 26. And so, like, when her son got to be 26, he moved out. Yeah, I heard about that one. Yeah. And, uh, he died because he had money. she didn't. She didn't, he didn't tell his parents that he didn't have enough money to buy his insulin. Yeah, I So anyway, she went to Congress, and she testified about this. So they announced this past week they're going to lower the cost of insulin. Mm. Um, I, I I think it's the insulin if you are, if you're not on an insurance plan, it costs you thirteen hundred a month <sighs> for the insulin medicine. A lot of money, boy. Yeah. I think you should give it to him regardless. Yeah. You know, even the government plan, keep giving him that, and that's the one he needs. If he was in California, he would have got on Medicaid. Yeah, he would have had it. Uh huh. Because he like some of those Republican governors didn't want the Obamacare. Yeah. And they say that they didn't want them in, in uh, Louisiana. Louisiana, Kentucky, all the red states. Yeah. Excuse me, all the red states. They didn't want it, and they complained. Saying it's too much for them to any line because mm -hmm. they, 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 the one they vote for, Republicans who they vote for, don't want it, but they don't, they don't recognize it. They vote against their own interests. That's what's wrong with them. And half of those states right there, the same thing that vote for the knucklehead Orange Cheeto. Donald Trump, your people, if y'all don't understand what I'm saying. I call him Orange Cheeto. Look at him, he look orange. So, anyway, they had a guy called Henry the Navigator. Mm -hmm. uh, now, like, when slavery started, a lot of people think it was the Europeans, but it wasn't. It was uh, Portuguese. Now, this is a... Uh, so, can you stand up a little bit? Okay. Let's get that. And look above this part of okay. Africa. Okay. Here we go. Uh, right up there. Right, right there. Do you, see, do you see Portugal and Spain? Right, that's right here. Okay, come down a little. Let's get Spain and Portugal. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You see Portugal is right next to each other. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. They had heard it was gold in Africa. Mm-hmm. So they were looking for it because they thought gold, it was like, they thought in Africa they had like a river of gold. Right. Because they had heard it was so much gold in Africa. So they weren't looking for it. He wasn't looking for it. In, in uh, 1441, two of uh, Henry the Navigator captains, they set out on the western coast of Africa. This is West Africa on this side. On this side, okay. That's West, and this side is East. Uh -huh. And they came across, uh, so they went to the western coast of Africa, to the south of the Cape. And they came across a market run by black Muslims dressed in white clothes and turbans. There they received a small amount of gold dust. The Portuguese crew also seized 12 black Africans to take back to Portugal. 
Not a slave, but it's exhibits to show Prince Henry uh, these black people. The new campus included a local chief who spoke Arabic, and the chief negotiated his own release in the terms of which were that if he and his, and his son was released and taken back to their homeland, they would provide other black slaves in exchange. Mm. That's how he got out of it. So, in 1442, Gunn Scal sailed back to the Cape Bianco, then returned with more gold dust and 10 black Africans. The following year, Portuguese explorers returned from Africa with nearly 30 slaves. Within 10 years, thousands of slaves had been transported by sea to Portugal and the Portuguese islands. They were the ones who did caught the slaves first. Mm. The Portuguese. Portuguese, okay. Uh -huh. Then the Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, uh -huh. Portugal. They like like us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, the one, they were looking for gold. Yeah. They heard it was gold in Africa. That's See, because when God put those black people there, he gave them gold, silver, diamond mines, and oil. All, yeah. all that's in Africa. He gave us all that. All that. God gave us everything. Everything. That's, that's why they hate us now. And so, Nate, uh, uh, right now, which I'll be talking about more uh, next week, is like the Chinese is really trying to colonize Africa now. The Chinese is. Mm. They're the one that's come bearing gifts, but these gifts are tied to something. Right. Now, they gave... Uh, they gave one country in Africa a big old beautiful mansion. But inside that mansion was eavesdropping machines. Oh. They heard everything the, the leaders was playing. Hey, because it's like at 2 o'clock every day, something would go funny with the electricity and they couldn't figure out why. Right. But that's when, at that time every day, that's when the Chinese would would unload the <laughs> listen to devices. The devices. Uh -huh. Well, I tell you, this, we got snakes everywhere. And so, see, the Chinese is giving them stuff. The Chinese and went over there. They went over to uh, Ethiopia and they built a train. Hmm. They went to another com a company, a country, and they built like a uh, airport. So, there's so many Chinese over there that Kenya. The Chinese want Kenya to make Chinese a mandatory language for them to be taught in school. What? Yeah. Now, why do Africans have to learn how right. to talk Chinese? That makes no sense. To get a job. Yeah. In Africa. In Africa, they're crazy. Man. It's like out here, they want you to speak Spanish. To get yeah. A job. Now, this is America, yeah. but they want you to speak Spanish right. to get a job. And, and I had a cousin down in Texas. Best, she was she was a janitor, and because she couldn't speak uh, Mexican language, they fired her. Mm. Somebody else from your country, you got to change for them, but you shouldn't have to. No. Because see, like in England, it's mandatory. If you go to that country, you got to learn their language. That's 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 the rule that you know England is. Mm. You got to learn their language. Wow. They don't have to bend down to you. No, they shouldn't. So when a person comes to America, they should need to learn how to speak That's English. That's right, speak English. Because we shouldn't have to not be able to get a job because we can't speak. Right. That's true. They, I mean, if you're if you working at McDonald's and all that kind of stuff, they probably don't have that many black people yeah. at McDonald's because they wanted them to speak two languages. And we shouldn't have to. They should speak our language and that's it. Otherwise, get on out. But so, so, but right now, the way, the way the country's set up and the way they're doing it is like, the children now, they, they gotta learn how to speak that language and get a job because they want you to have, they want you to speak uh, speak that language. Mm -hmm. And see, like, you know, people wanna talk about Hispanic, but Hispanic is not really, I don't know why they won't, won't say, speak Mexican language because Hispaniola is Haiti. Right. They wanna, be, they wanna be called Hispanic, but they don't have anything to do with Mexico. No. Nope. If you're Mexican, just say, I'm Mexican. a Mexican. That's it. And, be, and stop being ashamed. I'm not afraid to say I'm African American. Right. But they're ashamed to say they're Mexican. Mm -hmm. So they want you to call them Hispanic. But Haiti was called Espanol. Hispaniola. Right. Hispaniola. 
Hispaniola. That, that was the old name for Haiti. So um, I, I talked to him as I said, I said, you want to call yourself Hispanic, but did you know that that word come from ha uh, Haiti? Mm -hmm. They didn't know either. Uh, they didn't know. So I tried to tell them that. So all the time, so people you don't realize you're black like, like us, like us. But so we're gonna talk more about what China is doing over there in Africa. Okay. Because they 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 all over Africa, and they come in and they bring in gifts, and they have these contracts. When they give you a grant, they got all kind of loopholes in there mm. because they won't see they discovering any town that discovers new oil wells and stuff. Uh, China, 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 China go there. Wow. And and want to give them a gift. And and they let them people get all get the all rights and all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's a lot of them older African people that's really selling their country out. Just so they can have money. Right. See, it's the big shots at the top. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna have to kick out a lot of them older people who run the country and you let the young take over because they are very angry with the older people are doing. Right, so right. they just get in their pockets rich like uh, Devalier did in Haiti. Mm -hmm. He was filthy rich and the people were poor. Just like I am. Now they're selling themselves out. Africa should not have poor people with all the oil and the diamonds and the gold mine. Mm -hmm. And it's the Europeans that own everything over there. Why is that guy the president trying to kick them all out? Uh, the Zimbabwe guy did. So that's why they tried to, uh, they tried to break his country because he took the farms back from the other people, right. the European people, and gave it back to his people. So then, then they decided they were gonna starve them out. So, uh, so but anyway, what happened was Botswana decided that they was gonna loan some money to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is down here at the bottom, mm -hmm. about right in this area somewhere. It's Zimbabwe. It's next to. Uh, It's, it's right here. Is that, yeah, yeah uh, -huh. uh And Botswana is right behind there. Right behind the area. Okay. And they decided they're going to loan some money to it. So I'll be talking about Botswana and what they're going to do to help Zimbabwe. Because see, like, Zimbabwe wants to sell stuff to Europe. But they don't have to work. I mean, they got people all over the world you can sell stuff to. Yeah, all you don't have to just sell it to just to Europe. Right, everybody. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, you're just trying to pick one country and, and they're going to try to punish you just because you want to be free from the, their entanglement. Mm -hmm. And then this, one of these old guys over there in, in uh, Africa asked England to come back and colonize them. Mm -hmm. What they did a long time ago. Right. They colonized them. And they come, tell me, would you all come back and colonize us again? <laughs> we need your help. And Botswana said no. No way. I heard about yeah. That. yeah Botswana said no. Right. We'll loan you some money to help yeah. you. That's it. They said we will help you get your diamonds out the mine. Yeah. He tried to sell the soul to get into them. So that's the people being together. Another a black country, you know, African country, because because like in the United States, each they have United States have states, and they all one is the United States of America. But over in Africa, it's each country is into its own self. Mm -hmm. Like if you go from one country to the next, you need to have a passport. Myself, right? Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, they separate. Each country is separate. It's so maybe I'm, so if I want to go to Zimbabwe and do a show, I get a passport for that. I want to do one in Kenya. Yeah, yeah, get a passport yeah, for that. You have to have a passport to go to yeah, the next country. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's wow. not, it's not united like right. the United States. Like the United States, United States is. is. Yeah, each country is its own oh, to itself. Uh -huh. It's good to know. Mm-hmm. Because we're going to talk about all, in, in the, uh, next week we also be talking about all the diff different countries that have stolen artifacts from Africa. You mean next to our show? Yeah, next show. Next show will be, uh, what is it, we April now? Yeah. Wow. So May. May, man, time be flying. Mm -hmm. So right now we're going to play some music. The next show will be in May. The next first Saturday in May, you'll hear the rest of the African show, we 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 hitting your way and some more new stuff about. I'm gonna be talking about population control. Population control. Yeah, because see, they they trying to control how many black people be living. Mm -hmm. They're trying to cut down population of the black. Okay, so you see, you gotta comment again. If somebody needs to say, can you please speak about what USA and NATO doing to Labrilla?
Liberia. Okay, Liberia is a saint that is started by the ex-slaves. Right, U.S. and NATO. Uh huh. But it was started by the by the ex the people who was let free after yeah. slavery. They went back over there to Africa and started their own country. Right. And they called it Liberia, but it was really uh, Americans. After you know they were slaves, they came right. to America. And they went back. And they went back and started their own country in Liberia. So the question is what? Say Liberia. Topo Liberia, T O Y P O. Can you please be this say and NATO, and NATO did to? Oh, no, that's Libya. Libya. Oh, that's Libya. That's where Gaddafi was from. Okay. See, Gaddafi was trying to help the other African countries to come together, and um, they want. See, like United States asked you to give up uh, your weapons and everything. Mm -hmm. Then if you give it your weapons, then they'll come and get you. Right. See, and that's what they did. <laughs> so they tried, so they, they, that's how they got Gaddafi. Right. So you, you, see, you he you gave them up. See, that's why North Korea is not stupid. Right. North Korea is not gonna give up their missile because you can't trust the United States. No, you can't trust them. They're dirty. No. Dirty people. <laughs> yeah. Dirty. <laughs> you can't trust them, really. No. Because because their word is not. Not there. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they won't. They won't how can how can one country have the right to have all the weapons and the next country can't? Right. They they let Israel have as many weapons as they want, mm -hmm. but they don't want a country right next to Libya to have any, they don't want Iran to have their own weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, they want they want to choose who can right. have they weapons. Want to control everybody. So how can you tell me it's okay for you to have a gun and I can't have a gun? Right. They do that now, yeah. You know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. So this is what they did to Gaddafi. Gaddafi was was giving money to all these African countries and he's trying to help them. And they went there and they got him because he tried to get oh. along with America. Right. And the worst thing you can do is give up. You're supposed to have a right to defend your own country. Every country should have a right to defend your own country. Who's to say the United States can tell anybody what they can do? Right. Another country. Mm -hmm. Every country should be independent and be able to do what they want to do. Everybody have their own gun. See, if you got your gun and I got my gun, I'm going to respect you because right. you can shoot me. Yeah. But if you ain't got no gun, then I can kiss you. That's right. Just like you was talking about how, like, black people don't have that many guns, but if they start going as, as many, buying as many guns as the other people buy, right. they'll, stop that. They'll, they'll, <laughs> they'll change the law. They'll change the law real fast. Because why should you need to have an assault weapon yeah. in America? That's right. We and brought, that's all they buying is assault yeah. weapons. We go out there and buy all the black folk go to these black shit, black um, um, gun, shows. gun shows and buy. They see a hundred of black folks going there buying guns. That law will stop in a minute. But that's why they come come around in LA and give you a hundred dollars for your gun. Yeah. They come out to the black neighborhood. Yeah, no. yeah. Give, give them a hundred dollars and turn your gun in. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go out in Beverly Hills no. and, and, and give them a hundred dollar gift card. <laughs> they come, they go out to Watts and everywhere. <laughs> if we you turn your gun in, and the people do it, yeah. they come and bang their little guns. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Like. yeah, so that's yep. Yeah, so they did, they get, they did get that bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, quiet people. We're gonna get to the show ending. The Queen Mother Lois show. The Queen Mother Lois show is about to end. And I'm gonna take a break before my show, the True School Show, Independent Playlist. I'll be coming back on soon. Take a little break, a little play some music before we leave. And see. Uh, what should I play? I'm gonna play Marvin Gaye's song again. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I'm black and I'm proud. Uh, you got that? Yeah, so that definitely. They won't, they won't hear it on Facebook because they won't oh, okay. play it. Okay, so go and play yourself. Yeah, they won't play it. It's a shame. Well, play Smile. Yeah, let's play Smile, man. We're going to play it right now. Somebody asked you about Smile today. Yeah. Okay. And Smile's your T-shirts. Yeah. Oh, you got your Smile shirt on. Yeah, because you was the lady asking about it. Mm -hmm. right. And you be having them for sale? On sale. Starting in May. Mm -hmm. In May, I'll be in. Give me a short sleeve. Short, short short sleeve. sleeve yeah, I get a lot of compliments on my uh, green one. I have green and I have green and yellow. Right. Oh, yeah. I have my song there. I'm trying to see what I have hooked up with all my independent artists. A long list here. Show New York 
walk through the house, try to find a song to play. And so I will be talking about, uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about uh, the popula population control, because it's very important. Population control? What's that? Po population control. Okay. You know, that's what it's about. They decide how many people live and how many people oh, die. Oh, okay. You're talking yeah. about the, um, the, um... Well, they, they, did, they did that on purpose because, like, when they, when they took the Ethiopians out of Ethiopia and carried them to Israel, Israel gave them shots oh, when they couldn't have any more babies. Wow. That's, okay. what, that's what Israel done to Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. And they didn't tell them about the shots they was getting. Right, they just gave it to them. It's like the guy gave AIDS to people. Yeah, and so it's sort of like over, like in, in, in European countries, they're paying people to have babies, but in the black countries, they're trying to give them shots so you can't have more babies, and that's why they offer so many abortions. Right. Uh, to these young black girls, you know, if you get on welfare or whatever, they give abortions to you because see, the more black people alive, the more vote you can have. Right. And they're trying to limit that. Yeah. But see, well, like when the Masons come here, they always have what they call it with the uh, anchor baby. Yeah. <laughs> they get in when they can't put them out because they have a child here. So the, so the Masons are still having babies, but the black people, do it. I met one girl, she had five abortions one year. Ooh, that was right. pretty, I said, you know, that's really sick. Yeah, that's sick. Why don't you just get your tubes cut instead of just killing all the babies, wow. you know? Yeah. That's a shame. Just lazy. Yeah. That's a shame. Yes, that's, that's really bad. Yeah, really bad. so so they, they want you to cut down on having babies because they're trying to cut down on your votes. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right, people, we know we had a short show today, but we started late because we had other people that have been guesting. And but next time we will have our show, we'll start right on time, and we'll be longer. Because we know the, our we, show we our did show do, was, you know what? Our show was to start at 6, uh, 9.30 Eastern. Ends at um, six thirty. So we'll start here at six thirty. Yeah, six thirty. Ends at finishes at seven thirty. So it's eight o'clock. No, no, my show started at. Um, no, I'm talking about right time. It is now. Oh, okay. It's eight o'clock. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, we want to hit this hit the song right here from Nasty Two Two Five. Smile, you ain't dead yet. Dead people don't smile. Right. This song everybody have fun. Yeah, have it fun. 
by the people. Uh, just give me 10 minutes, and then my show will start. The clock, the, the um, independent playlist, a two two show, makes me two two five. Knowledge, not garbage. That's right. Come on in 10 minutes. Give me a chance to get myself together, and I'll be back on Facebook for a minute, and then I'll be on Instagram. Facebook for 30 minutes, and then the rest will be Instagram on the Nasky 225 Instagram. That's right. All right. So we'll be on the Andy Lee Facebook coming up next. The Independent Playlist. Might have a special guest calling in. Who knows? All right. Here we go. Got to go. Uh, Queen Willow is going to be back in May. So check her out on YouTube video. Describe to her on YouTube video, Queen Mother Lois show. You can see all her shows from the time she started to now. If you want to go back, go to Andy Lee Facebook. 